Hello Visual Effects people, I'm AK, this is Fluid Ninja Live and this is a real quick one. First, let me shortly demonstrate how you include non-planar trace mesh, a custom trace mesh to the Fluid Ninja Live simulation container. So, uh, first, let me demonstrate, this is the classical setup with a planar trace mesh and I'm simply selecting the container and I'm duplicating it so we could compare the planar and the non-planar version and I'm going to the details panel and in the component list, actor component list I'm selecting trace mesh and as you could see there is this option static mesh and it's a template so I could pick an arbitrary mesh and uh, I would like to include the Unreal default spherical mesh. As you could see the, the mesh is already in the container but it's slightly uh, <laughs> flattened and it is because uh, and I'm selecting the actor again because by default the trace mesh size is somewhat downscaled on the z-axis so I'm just reverting it to the same size as y and x and I do the same thing with the interaction volume as you could see this yellow cube and maybe one thing I would like to do is to set the rotation rotating it with 19 degrees so this is the planar version and here's the spherical one and there's one more thing I see uh, it looks like uh, the simulation texture is slightly distorted and it is because this spherical mesh the Unreal Engine default mesh is probably uh, mapped cylindric cylindrically and this way uh, the proportions of the texture are non-square so I'm selecting Ninja Live component going to the performance settings and I'm simply uh, setting a different texture size for the X resolution so the aspect ratio is going to be 2 to 1 and I'm starting the simulation again and it's working fine so uh, easy as pie really pick any arbitrary mesh it is uh, really the UV mapping of the mesh that matters but it's really up to you how you define your UV, UV mappings okay uh, so much about uh, using a custom mesh and the second thing I would like to talk about shortly is how we merging Ninja Live to a first-person shooter template because it is a bit tricky if you create a first-person shooter uh, from the Unreal default it is creating uh, a line trace channel that is hidden I'm going to the Windows file manager and here uh, in the project route I locate this folder called configuration config and this file called default engine.ini so now I'm opening it with a text editor and I'm searching for the word trace and as you could see we have two trace channels in this ini file one is projectile this is uh, the line trace channel that has been created with the first person shooter default and have a look at this if I switch back to the editor and go to the project settings and type in trace I get to this list of trace channels and I see only a fluid trace which belongs to, to Fluid Ninja Live so the other trace channel which is for the projectile is hidden uh, well I made a description how to handle this case so please navigate uh, to the project homepage and as you could see this link the changelog issues and frequently asked questions if you click on it you get into this PDF 
and I advise you to go to issue number four. It's a detailed description on how to handle this case with the hidden trace channel and what configuration mods to make to get this working. But it could be done in five minutes and it's a tested method. So shortly that's it. And once done, uh, you could very easily merge Ninja Live to a first person shooter template. And just to have a sense of how we could change presets, I'm changing this flowing down paint thing to something else by going to Live Generic and picking another preset. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a bit more smoke-like. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit like bullet holes when I'm firing this gun. <laughs> yeah, boy. So um, shortly that's the case. Using a custom trace mesh, which is non-planar, and merging Fluid Ninja Live to a first-person shooter template. Thank you for your patience and see you next time.